The year was 1943. The young doctor had just finished with medical college and he was posted in a small dispensary on the border of Maharashtra and Karnataka in a tiny village called Chandagar. This was in the middle of a jungle where it rained all the time and the people believed in native medicine. And so there was not much use for his services. Hardly anybody came to the dispensary. He saw more animals than he did people. The occasional tigress wandering in with her cubs, snakes hanging down from the roofs as thick as ropes. It was quite frightening. And very often he sat there alone, all by himself, wondering if he had been posted here as a punishment, but he couldn't figure out what he had done wrong. And there was no way he could get out of the situation. And so he stayed. Till one night, as it was raining, a dark night with it pouring outside and the wind blowing fiercely, so fiercely that he couldn't hear anything except for the whoosh of it through the windows, blowing his curtains, he heard a knock on the door. First, he thought maybe it was the wind and then he went to open it and out there on the veranda in that darkness stood three men wrapped up in blankets. Come with us, they said. Where are you taking me? He asked. That doesn't matter. Come with us. It's urgent. The doctor tried to protest, asking for information, wondering what he should take and where he was going, who he was going to treat. But these men wouldn't give him a chance to explain. Come, they said, grabbing him. And on his way out, he picked up his briefcase with his medical supplies, his tools, and he was pulled out of his house and unceremoniously dumped into a bullock cart. The journey started. It was a long journey that wound through paddy fields and through the forests. And even as he asked, where are we going? Tell me where we're going. There was absolutely no response to his questions. There was no moon. It was completely dark. It was raining. He was completely disoriented. He had no idea where he was going. And after what seemed like hours later, the bullock cart stopped outside a small house in the middle of a vast paddy field. He was pushed out of the bullock cart and stumbling, he walked up to the veranda of this house when he heard a woman saying, come, come, the patient is inside. Thinking finally he had a chance to use his medical skills, he walked up to the door and looking inside in that darkness, lit by just a kerosene lamp or two, he saw this young girl in a corner of what looked like a large room stacked with sacks. It seemed like a combination of a house and a granary. And there was this girl in a corner crying in pain. It was very obvious that she was pregnant and she was in the middle of labor. I can't do this, he said. He had never attended to a delivery before, except in college, in medical college, where he had observed this and assisted a gynecologist. He looked around, he turned to these men and said, I don't know what to do. I am a man and I have never attended to a delivery. Can you find somebody else, maybe a lady, a doctor? I don't know what to do. Go inside, they said, and pushed him inside the room and locked the door behind him. The doctor, he had no choice. He had to do something. It was just him and this young girl. And when he turned to one side, suddenly he noticed there was an old woman there. And from his interactions with his stumbling, hesitant interactions with her, it seemed like she was both deaf and dumb. He gestured to her to stack up the rice sacks to a level that would serve as a table for them, spread out a rubber sheet from his medical kit and asked this young girl to lie on it and helped her 
through a labor that went well into the night. She was in so much pain, this young girl. And in between her contractions, she told him her story. There were no schools in this tiny village. And her parents had sent her to the nearby town to study. There, she had fallen in love with a young boy. And sometime later, discovered that she was pregnant with his baby. She told him about it and he disappeared. He ran away, afraid for his life, because this girl was the daughter of the Zamindar, very powerful, very aggressive. He feared for his life. Left alone, pregnant, she came home, by which time it was too late to do anything. And she had been sent to this house in the middle of nowhere with just this old woman to care for her till she had her baby. Doctor, I don't want to live. She said, please don't save me. Just let me die. If this child is born, they will kill this baby. They don't care about anything. They just care about their honor. I can't do this. The doctor said, I'm a doctor. You cannot ask me to neglect my duties. Let's see what we can do. And he soothed her through the pain. And hours later, a little baby was born, a baby girl. When he lifted the baby and smacked the bottom and the child started to cry, the door burst open and the men came in. They looked at the doctor and said, your job is done. It's time for you to leave. And they pulled him out of the room. An old man there, a man he hadn't seen before, handed him a hundred rupees and said, your job is done. Go back, doctor. And if I hear from anybody that you've spoken about this, your head will not be on its body anymore. The doctor looked at the note that was handed to him. It was a hundred rupees. And at that time, his monthly salary was just 75. And suddenly, something struck him. He told the old man, I think I left my scissors back in the room and I need it for my clinic tomorrow. And went back inside. And he told this young girl, leave. Go away from here. Go to Pune. You will find the Pune nursing home there. Ask for Gokhale. Tell him that I sent you. Tell him Arit sent you. Gokhale will enroll you in a nursing course. Make a life for yourself. And don't leave your daughter behind. Take her with you. Otherwise, she's going to suffer the same fate as you. Dr. Pune, I don't even know how to go there, she said. And he said, the nearest town is Belgaum. Go to Belgaum. And then take a bus to Pune. He handed her the money and he left. Sometime later, this doctor, Arej, was transferred out of Chandakar. This incident wouldn't leave his mind and he qualified to be a gynecologist. And as years passed, he retired, but still being fond of learning, he would attend conferences to keep up with what was happening in the medical field. Almost 40 years had passed since that night in Chandagad. And the doctor had gone to a conference where he met a young woman who had her medical practice in one of the villages in Maharashtra. Very impressed with her work, he went up to talk to her. And just as they were wrapping up with their conversation, one of his friends, colleagues, called out to him saying, Arej, we're leaving now. Come, Are you coming? And this doctor stopped and said, Doctor, what is your name? And he said, I'm Arej Kulkarni. And the girl said, in 1943, were you posted in Chandakar? And he said, yes. And she said, please, you must come with me. There is somebody who wants to meet you. I live in a village about... 40 minutes away from here, please come with me. Quite unsure how to take this, he hesitated and she begged him and she said, please, 
This person's been waiting to meet you for many, many years. R.H. went with her. And on the way, they spoke about medicine and her rural practice till they reached her home. And when they went there, there was this elderly lady who this girl introduced to the doctor saying, Ma, this is Dr. Arich. And the elderly lady threw herself at his feet and he could feel his feet getting wet with her tears. He lifted her and said, what is this? What are you doing? Who are you? What is this all about? And she said, doctor, years ago, you remember in Chandagar, one rainy night, in a small go-down, you delivered a baby girl with her mother placed on a bed of rice sacks. That was me. I was the mother. I went to Pune. I joined Pune Nursing College. It was a very, very hard life, but we made it. And my daughter now is a gynecologist, as you have seen. We tried so hard to find you and we couldn't. We wanted you to come for the inauguration of this place, this nursing home, and we couldn't find you. And now you're here. It is as if God has come back to our home. I'm so grateful for what you've given me, what you've given my daughter, what you've given now so many women who would not have had medical help otherwise. It seemed so unreal. The doctor looked around and his eye was caught by a board in the corner of the room. It said, R.H. Diagnostics. Thank you for listening. This is a story that has come from one of Sudha Murthy's books. Dr. R.H. Kulkarni is her father, a doctor and a teacher. I hope you enjoyed this story. And being part of this contest, this competition, you're going to listen to many more stories narrated like this from other sources and original stories too. If you would like your story featured, you must send it in. The details will be given to you. The International Creative Collab Pune has put together a storytelling contest in Hindi, Marathi and English. This is for children and adults of all ages. All you need to do is to visit their social media page, take a look at the rules, write, record and post a video of your story. Hi, my name is Mahita. I am an actor, writer and storyteller and one of the judges for this contest. My Story Kata. Looking forward to your entry. All the best.